Hello, everyone. Welcome. So we have already discussed about immune system, immunity, allergens. And today we will be talking about autoimmunity. This is a chapter of Health and Diseases, Class 12 series. So in this phase, I will be talking to you about autoimmunity and autoimmune diseases as well as AIDS. So now coming to this, so memory-based acquired immunity, it has evolved in higher vertebrates based on the ability to differentiate foreign organisms, that is pathogen from the cell cell. We know that if we find, if our body finds a foreign cell, it acts against the foreign cells and kills the foreign cells. Okay, antibodies are being produced. That is what we have already learned. So there are two corollaries in this case. First is what, first is the higher vertebrates can distinguish foreign molecules as well as foreign organisms. We know this. And another corollary is what? Sometimes due to genetic or other unknown reasons, the body attacks cell cells. That means it can occur that body is unable to recognize the cell cells. So it is recognizing the cell cell as foreign cells and it is attacking. Okay. So this is resulting in what? This is re resulting in autoimmune disease like rheumatoid arthritis. So body is unable to recognize that these cells are my own cells. So they are going to go against the cells and kill the cells. Hence, there is a numerous pain in the joints and all those that will occur. So this autoimmune diseases, it may be because of the genetic factors. It may be the environmental factors which may have, could have led to the autoimmune diseases also the immune regulations. So it is a combined matter of all these things that causes the autoimmune diseases. When I talk about autoimmune diseases, I need to once more note about our immune system. So when I talk about immune system, what is it? The human immune system, it can, consists of a lymphoid organ. So it is having lymphoid organ tissues, cells, and soluble molecules like antibodies. Now, this immune system is unique in the sense that it recognizes the foreign antigens, responds to this, and remembers them. I have kept on telling you that they once come across a foreign an antigen, they always remember. And in the second response, whatever, you know, the response is quite fast. Whenever there's a second attack of the same enemy, the response is very, very fast. The immune system also plays an important role in the allergic reactions, autoimmune diseases, and organ transplantation. Okay. Now, if I come across the lymphoid organs, we have two kinds of lymphoid organs. One is primary organ, one is secondary organ. So, which are the primary organs? Primary organs means what? Here, I have immature lymphocytes which gets differentiated to the antigen-sensitive lymphocyte. So just the maturation would take place. So if the differentiation into the antigen-sensitive lymphocyte will come across. Once they form this antigen-sensitive lymphocytes, they mature. Now the action, they will go ahead and they will migrate to the secondary lymphoid organ. And there the action will take place. Okay, there it will go and proliferate, and uh, they will become the effector cell. Okay, so which are my primary lymphoid organs? Thymus and bone marrow. Only two primary lymphoid organs. B cells and T cells from bone marrow and thymus, we have T cells. All right, so we'll be discussing about the primary lymphoid organs in the uh, you know, upcoming slides. And secondary lymphoid organs, I have got numerous lymphoid organs, which are secondary lymphoid organs. Adenoids. Okay. Well, just, uh, you know, at the salivary area, we have adenoids, we have tonsils, then we have lymph nodes, we have spleen very close to the split stomach, pierced patches in the small intestine, in the villi region, appendix, 
Okay, and the lymph nodes, again, we have various lymph nodes at the corners that we have. Okay, next. Coming to bone marrow and blood cells. Bone marrow and blood cells would mean what bone marrow is? The marrow inside the bone. If in case uh, those who are non-vegetarians, you would have taken the leg piece and you would have seen that inside the leg piece, there is a marrow. There's a brownish, uh, you know, something like brown color is inside the bones. Hence, that is known as the bone marrow. So bone marrow is nothing but it includes numerous lymphocytes. Okay, numerous lymphocytes. Like it contains the red blood cells because bone marrow is, you know, where the red blood cells originate. It has got white blood cells like lymphocytes, monocytes, eosinophils, basophils, neutrophils, as well as platelets. So I told you, this is, the bone marrow is the place where the hematopoietic stem cells arise. So that gets differentiated into lymphoid progenitor cells and myeloid progenitor cells. So lymphoid progenitor cells is from where I will get the lymphocytes. Progenitor, genitor. Progenitor means what? From where the generation would occur. The previous portion of the generator cells. So when I talk about lymphoid progenitor cells, that means it will form my lymphocytes. When I talk about lymphocytes, which are my basic two different kinds of lymphocytes I have, T lymphocytes and B lymphocytes, which I call as T cells and B cells. T lymphocytes and B lymphocytes will come from lymphoid progenitor cells. When I talk about myeloid progenitor cells, from where I will have the other cells that will occur, which are my myeloid cells that will occur, whether it's platelets, erythrocytes, monocytes, neutrophils, basophils, sesnophils. So I told you bone marrow is where it has got, it includes a lot of lymphocytes, which is there. It's the main lymphoid organ that we have. The second lymphoid organ, what we have is thymus. So thymus is what? Thymus is, la is quite large when it is in infant. It is very, very large when it, it is an infant. It's like the 70 gram. But in adults, it reduces as we grow up. It keeps reducing the size and it becomes very, very small of 3 grams when we are in adult. So where is thymus located? Thymus is located near the heart and beneath the breast bone. So it is two lobed in structure. It is bilobed. Two lobes are there in the organ. And each lobe has a cortex and a medulla. In the cortex, what is that? Cortex is the outer. Cortex, what is? what does it have? It is tightly packed lymphocytes, macrophages, and epithelial cells, which is there. And epithelial cells helps to educate the T cells. So this is the uh, antigen that you have. The next time this antigen comes, you will have to attack. Okay. So this is your, it will keep on, the cortex will keep on uh, reminding, it will keep on revising the, uh, no, you know, the uh, lymphocytes that this is your enemy. This particular antigen is your enemy. This particular uh, pathogen, this is a pathogen. You will have to act against using this kind of antibody. You will have to secrete this kind of plasma. So it will keep on remembering re or giving an input so that they are by heart by the time they, you know, the child grows up. So I was talking the previous, when I was talking to you about um, immune system and I was talking to you about allergens, I had always been telling you that when we are small, we have a lot of immunity rather than when we grow up. So we can get used to immune or we can get immune to ourselves against various uh, where is the environment? We can get immune to the environment when we are small because our thymus is quite, quite, quite large. It is very, very large. When we grow up, the thymus becomes very, very small. So medulla, what does the function do? Uh, the same cells but less dense. Hassels, corpuscles, clusters of uh, dying cells functions unknown. So whatever be it. So now... Uh, what happens, both band, bone marrow and thymus, they provide microenvironments for the development and maturation of T cells. Okay, now 
A second lymphoid organ that we are going to talk to you about is spleen. Spleen is again a very, very important organ. The spleen is quite bean shaped in nature. It is uh, present in the epigastric region, just above the stomach. It is there. Okay. And um, it is between 9th and 11th rib and almost in the line with the 10th rib. So the largest lymphoid organ in the body is spleen. So it consists of lymphocytes and phagocytes. It acts as a filter of the blood by trapping blood-borne microorganisms. And spleen has the large reservoir of erythrocytes. So whenever I talk about spleen, the spleen can produce iron. It can, you know, produce antibodies. Because um, as I told you, this primary and uh, the primary lymphoid organs, they will differentiate. And all the maturations of this uh, antibodies will take, will take place in the secondary lymphoid. So it is going to produce the muscles. It's going to produce the lymphocytes. It has got a large reservoir of erythrocytes. RBCs are there. Platelets is going to, and it will filter against the pathogen. It will kill the pathogen. So again, recycling of iron, what are the functions of spleen that you have recycling of iron? It synthesizes antibodies, produces lymphocytes, creates and removes, uh, creates RBCs and removes the dead RBCs, which is there. And the platelets, it stores and clears the platelets. And there is a filtration that kills the pathogens. Okay, so if I talk about the lymph nodes, they are small solid structure located at different points along the lymphatic system. So there are various small, small points which are there. There are various lymph nodes with it. Lymph nodes serve to trap the microorganisms or other antigens which happen to get into the lymph and tissue fluid. And antigens trapped in the lymph nodes are responsible for activation of lymphocytes present there and cause the immune response. So in case if there's an antigen, if the lymph node recognizes this is an antigen, then this lymph node, they are responsible for activating the lymphoid lymphocytes, which is there. And that can cause the immune response. Now, if I see, we have one very important lymphoid tissue, which is mucosa-associated lymphoid tissue. So when I say mucosa-associated, mucosa, it is having the mucosa membrane is there. So mucus is there. Hence, I would say the, the activation or whatever I'm talking about, the response that is because of the mucosal membrane or mucosal epithelium, which is there. So hence the name is mucosa associated lymphoid tissue or MALT. MALT plays a role in regulating the mucosal immunity. The components of MALT are sometimes subdivided into two parts. One is the GALT. When it is a gut associated, it is with the gut in the pears patches, which is there. Uh, we have the pears patches in the small intestine in the gut. So it is, uh, we say it is GALT, gut-associated lymphoid tissue. BALT is bronchus-associated lymphoid tissue. If it is the bronchi, so the epithelium tissue is in the bronchial uh, area. So it is BALT. Okay. And then after that, I have NALT, which is nasal-associated lymphoid tissue. In the nasal cavities or the nasal uh, lymphoid system, if I have. So if it is in the GALT, it is GALT. If it is in the bronchi, bronchi means the lung area, the bronchioles and all those. So if it is there, I say it is bald. And it is in the nose or the nasal region, I say it is not. Okay. So now if you see uh, here, there's a mucosa cells which is there. Okay, this mucosa cell antigens will come and it will enter into the muscles. There is a cell over there. It will, once it enters, it is organized lymphoid follicle is there. 
they will release the plasma cells and in turn produce IgA. For allergies, it produces IgE. For mild, it is producing IgA. Okay? Again, antigen IgA. So this is the basic antibody which gets, uh, you know, secreted. So there is a lymphoid tissue also located within the lining of the major tracts, respiratory digestive or urogenital tracts called mucosa-associated lymphoid tissue marked. It constitutes about 50% of lymphoid tissue in human body. One of the very common examples, just to give you an example, what is a mark to make you understand very clearly? I already told you that it is based on the mucous uh, membranes and it protects the pathogen trying to enter the body. Is there in the tonsils, pears, patches, appendicitis? I just gave you a small example of tonsillitis that, you know, most of us have uh, faced tonsillitis. There's a swelling in the throat that is happening, unable to. Uh, eat something. So in the mucosa membrane of the throat, what is happening there might might have been some kind of infection. So some kind of infection would have happened. So if there's some kind of infection, then what is happening? The glands over there is getting swelled. Mesolimbic glands, it will swell up. So once it swells up, then I will have the tonsils. My tonsils will swell, swell up and thus I can see the reddening and, and uh, you know, if you see the swelled tonsils, there will be some muscular patches will be there. Some might have some kind of small, small white dots would be there. So it is various infections that would have a response. Now coming to autoimmune disease. So autoimmune disease, the disease which is caused because of autoimmunity. I, I told you rheumatoid arthritis. So that is caused due to autoimmunity. So one of the most common autoimmune disease, if I talk to you about, is AIDS. AIDS is what? Acquired immunodeficiency disease. There's a deficiency in the immunity. So this is an acquired because I acquired it during my, uh, you know, during uh, my uh, life. So that is acquired immunodeficiency syndrome. So now what is syndrome? Why it is not a disease? Why, why do I call it as a syndrome? Syndrome is because it's a group of symptoms which is there. Okay. And there's a deficiency in immune system which is acquired in the lifetime that I said to you. So it is not congenital. It, it cannot get spread from one person to another like Simply because I'm coughing or because I'm sneezing, it cannot get spread. AIDS was first reported in 1981. And in the last 25 years or so, it has spread all over the world, more than 25 million persons. So there are lots of people who are getting affected by AIDS. Okay. So AIDS is caused by... Human immunodeficiency virus, or I say it as HIV virus. This HIV virus, it is a retrovirus. What is a retrovirus? This retrovirus has got a option of reverse transcriptase. So it has RNA. From there, the DNA is produced. Okay. So usually what happens whenever there is uh, some, because what is a reaction that will be formed? Some kind of protein is being produced. So from DNA, I will have the RNA produced and RNA will transcript into the protein. Right. But what happens when, you know, inside I have RNA, from RNA I have to get the DNA. So there is a reverse transcriptase that is happening. DNA is not forming the RNA, but instead RNA is going to form the DNA and then again the protein will be formed. Hence, I, I have a reverse transcript. So if I see the HIV virus just towards the right corner, if you see the HIV virus, inside I have viral RNA. There is a reverse transcriptase that is there. And there is attachment of proteins which is there. There is a lipid envelope. 
and a protein capsid. So this is the structure of HIV. Now, HIV is transmitted through various ways. Four have been listed here. One is unprotected sex or sexual contact with infected person. So this is one reason of getting HIV. Second is by, uh, you know, when if you're sharing a needle from uh, with the infected person. So sharing of needles with the infected person, say, uh, if, you, if, you are, uh, if you are into drug abuse or something, you are, it was, it was very common that you share the needle from the infected person. Okay. So by sharing infected needles, as in case of intravenous drug abuses, in case of drug abuses. This is two things which is very, 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 very common. Okay. This is the two basic reasons of spreading of HIV. Now, there are other two reasons which, if taken care of, can be eliminated. One is transmission from an infected mother to the fetus. Mother is HIV positive or mother is causing AIDS, having AIDS then this is almost eliminated. You can always avoid or you can always, uh, you know, uh, take precautions in that case. Or again, it may be I have a blood transfusion that is taking place, injection from blood products or blood transfusion by blood transfusion. So it is always taken care that blood transfusion, the needle is, inserted to a single person and it is then discarded. Okay, so contamination of needles is almost avoided. So these are the eliminated. But however, I can say there are four ways by which it is being transmitted. One is sexual contact with an infected person by transfusion of contaminated blood and blood product, by sharing infected needles as in case of intravenous drug abuses and from infected mother to her child to placenta. Now, people who are at high risk of getting this infection, now, if I know how it is being spread, I know who are the people who are at a high risk. If there are individuals who is having multiple sex partners, again, uh, you know, HIV is very common. Drug addicts, as I told you, you are sharing the needle, so you might get individuals who require repeated blood transfusions. So they are at high risk of getting HIV. And children born to HIV infected mother, we can always assume, okay, mother is HIV positive, that means the child is HIV positive. It is important to note that HIV is not spread to Mere touch or physical contact. It spreads only through body fluids like blood or, you know, the body fluids that is there. So if you think that if I swim along with HIV positive person, there might be a high chance of me getting HIV. No, that will not happen. Okay. Not even by sweats, tears or, you know, the insects or pets or sharing toilets. No, all this do not make you spread HIV. It is hence imperative for the physical and the physiological well-being that the HIV or AIDS-infected person are not isolated from the family and the society. They are in part in the parcel of the society. We need to accept them. Okay. There is always a time lag between the infection and the appearance of AIDS symptoms. And it might range from 5 to 10 years. So you have good blood cells. Once you, you get infected, then there might be acute infection. And then it will keep on proliferating. It will keep on multiplying. So it will take approximately 10 years for you to have HIV spread in a very huge condition that their symptoms would occur. So HIV is the virus that causes HIV infection and HIV damages the immune system by killing the CD4 cells. Now what is CD4 cells? CD4 cells are part of the immune system. So HIV attacks and kills the CD4 cells and loss of CD4 cells makes it hard for the body to fight off infections. 
So now, in a due course of time, what happens? AIDS will come. It's the last stage of HIV infection. So remember, if you're HIV positive, doesn't mean that you have AIDS. Right. So now once it is in the last stage, you are having AIDS and HIV uh, infection advances to the AIDS, the amount of HIV in the body increases and the number of CD4 cells decreases. HIV medications can stop HIV infections from advancing to AIDS. So if you take early medicine, very good. Without HIV medicines, HIV advances to AIDS in about 10 years. Now, how does this proliferation occur? Okay, so after getting into the body of the person, once this HIV virus enters the body of a person, okay, so this virus is a retrovirus, I told you. The HIV virus is a retrovirus. So these will enter into the macrophage. Once it enters into the macrophage, the RNA of the virus will replicate to form the viral DNA. So RNA is entering. Then it is going to replicate. It is going to form the viral DNA with the help of the enzyme. Reverse transcriptase, as I showed you, it is already present in the virus. Okay. Now this viral DNA, it will get incorporated into the host DNA and directs the infected cell to produce the virus. So this viral DNA gets incorporated with the host DNA. Replication would occur. Okay. So uh, now once it is getting encrypted in or integrated with the host DNA, Whatever is forming, it will start producing various virus particles. And the macrophages will continue to produce virus particles in this way. And it, like, it works like an HIV factory. It is going to produce many, 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 many HIV viruses. Okay. Simultaneously, so HIV will enter into the T helper cell. So, I told you T helper cells, what it does, it helps in the producing of the T lymphocyte, right? T helper cells always remembers antigen. It goes, so once you, you go ahead, you hit the T helper cells, it will start acting according to what the virus says. So you just need to, to for the response to occur, you need to catch hold of the one who is helping. The helper will go, just like uh, mantra, you know, uh, he, it will, he, she will just put um, like how mantra did, right? Just put what has to be done. And then, you know, Sri Ram was expelled into the vanavas. Okay, so like that only will, it will do. So the virus particles will go to the T helper cells and will start replicating and produce the progeny virus. So it has already given the mantra. Now what will happen? The progeny virus, it will release the blood, attack the other T lymphocytes. So now the T helper cells has started attacking its own cells, the T helper cells. And this is repeated leading to a progressive decrease in the number of T helper cells in the body of the infected person. So the number of T helper cells started reducing. As I told you, CD4 cells, right? The number starts reducing. And during this process, what happens? Now there is a total fight which is going on inside the body. So when there's a fight inside the body, we start having fevers, weakness, weight loss, diarrhea. All these things will happen. And now due to decrease in the T helper cells, the person starts feel, having infections that could have been otherwise overcome, such as those due to bacteria, especially mycobacterium and all this. If it's a bacterial inf infection, we can always overcome it. Give some medication. But what happens? T helper cells has got replicating and the T helper cells already now is acting like a virus. 
So now it is very difficult, you know, to medicate and treat the tree helpers. The patient becomes immunodeficient that he or she is unable to protect himself or herself against this infection. Now, the question is, if AIDS is there as a disease, then there should be a cure to it. So there is an antiretroviral or, you know, there are antiretroviral drugs which is there which is partially affected. Obviously, till date, there is no cure for it. But yes, if it is being, you know, checked at the very initial stages, we can cure it. But uh, it is partially affected. If I say months you have an AIDS, then you can revert it back. It is difficult. They can only prolong the life of a patient, but cannot prevent death, which is inevitable. Death is inevitable, but... Death due to AIDS is also inevitable. So what is the best way? Best way is to prevent AIDS. So when I say prevention, so to prevent, I should know how it is being caused. So cause is basically the conscious behavior pattern. I'm, I'm consciously getting drug abused. I'm consciously having multiple sex. So this is a conscious behavior that is happening. So I cannot say, oh, I just happened to get it. I did not know. So I cannot be ignorant about all these things, right? So I just cannot inadvertently get pneumonia or typhoid. It is not something that it just happened. I got an infection. I did not know that pneumonia is knocking at my door. So I always know when AIDS is knocking at my doors. Okay. Of course, infection is in kind in terms of blood transfusion to patients, newborn from the mothers. This may take place due to poor monitoring is accepted. But the only excuse may be ignorance and it has been rightly said, don't die of ignorance. So, and today's days we have uh, the NACO committee or NACO organization, we have national AIDS control organization and other NGOs, they are doing a lot of things to educate people, uh, you know, against AIDS. So there are numerous programs, which is there. They make blood safe from HIV from the blood bank. So once blood goes to the blood banks, they check for the HIV, discard which are HIV positive bloods. Ensuring the use of only disposable needles and syringes in public and private hospitals and clinics. So now if you go for any kind of blood transfusion, you will say once after the blood transfusion, they're discarding away the needle. Free distribution of condoms, controlling drug abuse, advocating safe, safe sex, awareness programs are being done and they promote regular checkups for HIV is susceptible population. So when they know that this population is very susceptible to HIV, they keep on give, giving regular checkups. So all these things can prevent AIDS. Now the infection with HIV or having AIDS is something that should not be hidden. It's okay to have AIDS, but there's nothing to hide it. So the infection may spread to more and more people. HIV or AIDS infected people need help and sympathy instead of being shunned by society. You cannot just hate them. You cannot just push them away. They need, they, they just need help. Okay. Unless the society recognizes it is as a problem to be dealt with in a collective manner, the chances of wider spread of the disease increases manifold. It is a mal uh, malady that can only be tackled by the society and medical fraternity acting together to prevent the spread of diseases. If you remember, if you go through, we do celebrate World AIDS Day. The World AIDS Day is celebrated on December 1st, keeping in the mind inclusion, respect, and equity. So we need to include the people within the society. We need to accept them. 
we need to respect them we should not look down upon acha yahi no respect them okay and equity a uh, equal opportunity needs to be given they need to be treated in a similar manner so stating this prevention is better than cure especially when something has no cure with this i end thank you the upcoming topic would be cancer and the next would be drug and drug abuse with that we will complete the chapter thank you